So Young used sunlight as his source and he put it through a little pinhole so he get a nice single point source of sunlight and then he put it through two other pinholes and he saw his interference fringes and from the placement of those he figured out that the wavelength of the red light was around about a micron and the wavelength of the blue light was around about half that. And the other main thing he showed was that light was clearly a wave because you can't possibly get interference fringes if you don't have a wave. You can't get two particles adding together to give you nothing or two particles adding together to give you the equivalent of four particles. It has to be a wave if you're going to have interference. And so we went and published this and showed, yes, light is a wave, I've shown it. And this, of course, made people very angry. And so corpuscular theorists attacked him in the Edinburgh Review and eventually he was sufficiently undermined that he went back and focused on medicine for a while. In the years to come after that, Fresnel wrote a thesis about wave properties of light, and Poisson tried to prove him wrong by saying, well, obviously, if light's a wave, then if you have a perfectly round object, then what you should have in the middle of the shadow is a bright spot, because all the light going around the edges of your blockage should all constructively interfere there, and you get a bright spot. Now, people originally took Poisson's suggestion as a disproof of the wave theory of light because no one had ever seen bright spots in the middle of shadows before. But in order to expect that bright spot, you have to have your surface smooth on the scale of the wavelength of the wave. And given that the wavelength of the wave was supposed to be around a micron, it took them a while to make a ball that round. And when they did, of course, what they saw was this bright spot, now called Poisson spot. And so our final conclusion was that light is certainly a wave.